Hi everybody, Susie here with Phillips Handcart Company, and this video is all about finding happy trekking trails that you can trek for free. So, what's the secret to finding the perfect trek trail? Well, the secret is no secret, really. It's all about using public lands. That's the key to landing the perfect trek trail for free. And this includes both state and federal public lands. But here's the thing. Not all public lands are created equal. Take Bureau of Land Management lands, for example. Recently, the Bureau of Land Management has started charging $5 per head per day just to use the land. Now, I don't know if this is the case in every state, but I do know that this year was the first year that the fee was imposed in Utah. And I know they've been charging this ridiculous fee at Martin's Cove as well. Now, add that up. If you have 200 people for your three-day trek, that adds up to an eye-popping $3,000. And what do you get for that three grand? Well, you get just the raw land to trek on. That's it. No restrooms, no water, no nice camping facilities, nothing. So it's kind of like throwing good money to the wind. So forget about Bureau of Land Management land for now because there are so many better options. My favorite are forest lands. Most U.S. Forest Service lands are great places for pioneer treks because the land is free to use for nonprofit groups. They have plenty of great trekking trails. Most of the terrain is similar to what the pioneers encountered as they made their way west. There is ample camping space and the terrain is varied and well adapted to meet whatever type of trek that you envision, from easy to difficult. Also, the Forest Service typically will not give you resistance if you want to use horses on your trek. Just be sure to bring only certified weed-free feed for the animals. And here's a trekking secret about national forests and even state lands. The gravel roads are free to trek on and don't require a permit. But it's where you camp and park your potties and cars where the permit comes into play. So if you're not camping on the forest land and maybe you're camping on private property where you've obtained permission, then you won't need a permit. But otherwise, you'll likely need a free nonprofit special use permit. Now let me give you a few tips that will help you get that forest special use permit. First, apply for your permit as early as possible because usually they'll need to do an environmental impact study on your trail before they'll approve your permit. Now, what that involves is they'll call in their biologists, their archaeologists, their geologists, and any number of other ologists, and they'll determine if the area has been cleared for the kind of use that a trek involves. Now, keep in mind that a no is not necessarily final. If you get a no, then sit down with them and with your hat in your hand, ask them what other options they can offer you. In almost every case, if you approach them asking for their guidance, letting them take the wheel and making it their idea instead of yours, you'll usually get what you want. We did this on our first trek. We mapped out a trail on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. We were the first group to ever have trekked there, and at first they flat out told us no right off the bat. And they had all kinds of reasons. Something about a nesting area and unfinished artifact study areas and such. But when they listened to what a trek really was and, and when we humbly asked them for their guidance, they softened and ended up giving us a much better trail with even better campsites. Their entire plan met our goals perfectly. And after it was all said and done, they asked us to send more trek groups in the future which is what we have been doing. And they've been very happy with treks ever since. But the easiest way to get approval is simply to use trails that have already been approved. And our website is a great place to find a number of approved trek trails. So go to handcart-trek.org and browse the maps from various different states. These are treks that have already been proven and are easy to get permits for. Now over the years, we've worked with the Forest Service for decades, holding recreational special use permits, and we've learned a lot from them over the years. One thing that we've learned is that some forest districts are easier to work with than others. And we also have a list of those who we've found to be easy and, and those who are not so much. And so go to our website to get that information. And while you're on the website, you can start the application process by downloading the permit application. Okay, so here's some tips to keep in mind when submitting your application. You'll need to prepare a purpose of trek statement for the permit. And here's a sample of one that we actually have used. And we have this sample posted on our website, so go there. 
Second, you'll need a certificate of insurance for the permit. Now, this is free and it's obtained from LDS Risk Management at this address. Third, you'll need a trek route map. Now, while you're considering your trek route, you should use a GPS to mark your coordinates for your campsites, locations of porta potties, staging areas, parking areas, and possible stops for vignettes and lunch breaks and stuff. Because eventually you will make a trek map, and the forest rangers will probably request a detailed map at some point during your application process. So, GPS coordinates will help you a lot, and even if the ranger doesn't request a map, you and your committee will certainly need one. Fourth, you'll need a list of emergency numbers. This list typically is provided to the Forest Service as part of your application process. Even if they don't request it, it will be used by key Trek committee members for safety. And the list typically includes the following numbers. Forest Service, Police Department, Area emergency numbers such as police, sheriff, medical, highway patrol, hospital, trek coordinator including cell numbers, satellite phone number, high counselor over young men, high counselor over young women, and stake presidency counselor over youth. And finally, after your trek, you should prepare a post trek report for the Forest Service. Now, this report sums up the trek experience, offering gratitude toward the Forest Service and includes a few details. You should also include a few pictures. Now keep in mind that this report should not include any religious overtones whatsoever. So it should also indicate any improvements that your group made during your trek, such as trailside cleanup activities. Now I've included a sample post trek report on our website to help you get this done. And finally, one last consideration that you should make when planning your trek route is an alternate route for your support crew. It's likely that vehicles will need to transport equipment, water, potties, or whatever during the course of your trek. Having an alternate route for this purpose keeps traffic away from your trekkers while they're making their way along the trail. As you can imagine, vehicles dampen the spirit of trekkers, so it's best if they're always out of sight. Ideally, you'll be looking for a trail which has an outshoot trail, which can accommodate your support crew and other traffic. And that about wraps up this second video for planning a stress-free trek. Now, make sure you get the rest of these videos by liking us at facebook.com slash handcarttrek. And again, for the free trek planning kit, go ahead and visit handcart-trek.org. Okay, so now in the next video, I'll reveal a group of lovable minions who can't wait to help you start the wheels rolling on organizing your trek and the jobs you can get them working on right now. So, I'll see you in the next video.